that's it. What's the text? Oh my god. Hi! Hi folks at home. Uh, that stream was from Celia Sherry, who wants all of the world to know that her birthday is four days from right now. So wherever you are in internet land, four days from now, send Celia Sherry a happy birthday note on her Facebook wall. Really, we don't give away people's addresses. We do say look them up on Facebook, C-E-L-I-A Sherry. So there it is. Then she has to click ignore, ignore, not now, block this person, report this person, <laughs> images inappropriate, all that stuff. Um, what, I, what we got to do off the bat, we got to do, we got to do a quick review of parametric equations. So I thought that I would review really quickly everything we need to know about parametric equations. Thank you. And the thing with parametric equations is that. Uh, we have both x and y, and they're both functions of time. This was that business we studied where we don't know, uh, uh, let me try that again, where x is not the independent variable, time is the independent variable, and at any given time we can figure out where a particle is in the x-y plane. And so I got to make sure we remember how to do some things. I got to make sure we remember how to find slopes of tangent lines to parametric curves. Uh, this was stuff that we worked out in our homework last night. It is stuff we will work out in homeworks again. How do we find dy dx? That's right. The proof of that is a little bit more complicated than copy chain flip, but not by much. dy dt over dx dt. So uh, as a side note, as a side note, horizontal tangents and vertical tangents are things they like us to try to find. To find a horizontal tangent, you need dy dt to be zero and the x dt not to be zero, because zero over zero would be weird. Weird. Vertical tangents, you need the x dt to be zero, and the y dt not to be zero. You should technically check to make sure that the y dt is not zero, because otherwise you have that zero over zero weird situation. Awesome. Um, as a, a secondary thing here, um, we know what dy dx is. Uh, and even though we've talked about it already today, I'll do it for the nice folks at home. When we find a second derivative in parametric equations, we take the derivative of dy, well, let's try this again. We take the derivative of y prime with respect to t. So we take whatever this answer is and find its derivative, and then the denominator is still the dx dt from before, which is super. Uh, other things we need to know how to do. Velocity vectors. The velocity vector is a vector. We take the oh, we just take the derivatives of x and y. We take the derivative of x with respect to time and the derivative of y with respect to time. If we do that, that helps us know what speed is. How do you find the magnitude of a vector, everybody that passed pre-calc? Square them, add them, take a square root. Square them, add them, take a square root. That's true. You didn't take pre-calc. You took the IB math standard level course, which means you should know this better. That's the spirit. Should. Of course, in theory, Mr. Ritter, communism works. Yes, I know, I know. Um, if we know speed, by the way, then arc length is easy. 
because I've known forever that if I need to know arc length, I just basically integrate speed. So to, to get from speed to arc length, we take an integral from one time to another time of square root dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. Marvelous. Marvelous. And then there's only one other thing we need to know how to do. And that's deal with the acceleration vector. Uh, how do you find an acceleration vector? What do you do with the velocity vector? You take both of those derivatives. There it is. You, you do not double the derivative, but you do take what some people call a double derivative, which is just silly talk. Momac! No, ma'am, it's not. Uh, the, the question was, is the acceleration vector just these guys? And that answer is no. That answer is no. It's just straight derivatives. Um, whatever, whatever this function is, second derivative gets you there. That's what we're dealing with. Um, which means that the acceleration vector doesn't do for us. Uh, velocity vector and slope of a line are very closely related. Acceleration vector, concavity, not at all related. Not at all, uh, which is not satisfying. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yay. Um, what I'll say for the folks at home is if you download the PDF that comes with this, you're going to get this nice practice question. This is a calculator active practice question because I think this is one of those things that's going to stay calculator active. Remember, we dropped from three to two. I think they're going to kick area volume into the inactive section. Uh, and if you do this practice question, then just cover up the part at the bottom of the page that has all the answers, and you can always check yourself later because you guys have all sorts of spare time to kill tonight, and you love a practice parametric question. There's only two active questions on the test. There are four inactive questions on the test. I think they get, they're going to kick area and volume. Uh, when, when they say, here's a region R, find its area, find its volume, I think they're going to kick that inactive. So we'll see what happens tomorrow, folks, and that's that.